In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the isoelectric point of acidic amino acids. So there are two acidic amino acids, aspartic acid and glutamic acid. In this case, we're going to use aspartic acid as our example. You can see here that we now have three acidic groups, the carboxylic acid group, the amino group, as well as the side chain of aspartic acid. Now, the pKa of the carboxylic acid is always around 2. The amino group of aspartic acid is around 9.7. And the side chain of aspartic acid has a pKa of about 3.7. So again, if we're starting in a situation where all three of these groups are in their protonated states, that would mean that we're at a very low pH value, a pH value lower than all of these pKa values. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to start from a low pH value and we're going to gradually increase the pH. And as the solution becomes progressively more basic, these different acidic functional groups will become deprotonated once the pH exceeds their pKa values. So of these three acidic functional groups, the first that's going to be deprotonated is the carboxylic acid. Once we exceed a pKa of 2, it's going to become deprotonated into the carboxylate. The next group that's going to be deprotonated is the side chain. It has a pKa of around 3.7. So once the pH exceeds 3.7, then the side chain will become deprotonated. And finally, you would have to increase the pH until it exceeds 9.7 until you deprotonate the amino group. So at this point, all three of these groups are deprotonated, so you're at a high pH greater than all of these pKa values. So you could be at something like 11, 12, 13, whatever number you want to pick, so long as this pH value is greater than all of the pKa's. Okay. So the next thing you want to do is we want to identify the Zwitter ion. So you can do that by looking at the charge of these molecules. If we look at our starting molecule, we can see that our acidic groups are neutral. Our basic group has a charge of plus one. So the first molecule has a charge of plus one. You can then take a look at our second molecule. Our second molecule, it has a carboxylic acid with a minus one charge the amino group with a plus one charge and a side chain which is neutral, so this charge is zero. Since this molecule does have both positive and negative charges and a net charge of zero, this molecule here is our Zwitter ion or dipolar ion. Continuing, this molecule here, it has two minus one charges and a plus one charge, so its charge is minus one. And this last molecule only has two minus one charges, so its charge is minus two. So once you've identified your Zwitter ion, to calculate the isoelectric point, remember you want to look at the molecule and take the pKa values on both sides. In this case, 2 and 3.7 to plug into the equation for calculating the isoelectric point. pKa1 plus pKa2. So again, taking these two pKa's on either side of the Zwitter ion, that gives us 2 plus 3.7 over 2, which gives us 5.7 divided by 2, which is going to give us 2.85. So this is the isoelectric point of aspartic acid, and you can note that it is substantially lower than polar and nonpolar amino acids.